Hey guys, here with a bonus draft video this week, in addition to our usual Magic Origins video. I am also doing a Rise of Eldrazi draft this week because it is available on Magic Online temporarily as a flashback draft. Um, it's a format I've drafted a grand total of one time, and that was yesterday. Um, I've played Magic since about Urza's block, but I w didn't play very much between Lorwyn and Innistrad, so I missed this draft format, and I haven't played in the previous uh, flashback draft, so certainly no expert on this format. Um, I haven't really studied it the way I do, you know, newer formats like Magic Origins and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, it is a lot of fun. It is, it's nice to get away from Magic Origins and play a slower format um, where it's not all about two drops and three drops, and there's lots of cool, sweet spells that you can actually play. Unfortunately, the rare we open, I think, is pretty mediocre. Um, you don't really want to be going all out on an Aura deck, at least not off your, after your first pick. I mean, maybe if I got a few Aura Narlids. Um, Stagger Shock's pretty great, I think, anyway. Um, Kiln Fiend, you can sort of build a Kiln Fiend deck in this format that's pretty good. Dawn Glare Invoker is also very good. Um, I think Dawn Glare Invoker and Stagger Shock are probably the best cards in this pack. Null Champion's also a pretty good leveler. Um... Lone Missionary is fine, Lay Bear, I guess you might play. Growth Spasm is a good um, ramp card, but I think we're probably, we don't really want Ogre's Cleaver. Like, none of our uncommons are great. Um, they're okay, and our rare is pretty mediocre. So, I think we either want Dawn Glare Invoker or Static Stagger Shock. Um, and I think I'm leaning towards the Stagger Shock. Um... I'm going to prioritize the removal instead, and it's, you know, it's got rebound, and that's a pretty big card advantage that it can it can generate for you. Okay, well, Palaka Worm. Okay, Brimstone Mage is very good. So is Palaka Worm. Um, Ulamog's Crusher is good, too. He's one of the ones, one of the Eldrazi you really want if you're trying to go ramp. Emra Cool's Hattrick can help you go ramp. Um, right now, I think I'm going to take the Brimstone Mage. He's just incredibly good. He levels up. He only needs to get to level 3, and then he gets to, to Lightning Bolt something every turn. You know, he taps to do it. I mean, he's somewhat vulnerable. He is a creature, after all, but I think I want him. I think I stay red and just stay kind of open um, until we see that red's not open. Uh, the Hatcher's not bad either, and neither is the Crusher. Um, Path Razor, I don't think is that great. As far as Eldrazi go, uh, I'd rather have a Palaka Worm or something like that if I wanted to get a big drop out of this pack. But yeah, we're going to go with the Brimstone Mage. So, yeah. Oh, they do both cost three. I didn't think they did. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with our first two picks. Um, I really like Brimstone Mage. In the first draft I did, I had him, and he was an all-star. Um, I went 2-1-1 and one with that deck. It was... Uh, Red blue deck. Um, there's an Eldrazi temple if we really want to go the Eldrazi route. Um, there's also a skeletal worm. I mean, these big spells, you know, it's it's kind of hard to get out of the mindset of uh, Magic Origins where this would just be unplayable, but here it's really playable. Um, Cadaver Imp can generate a lot of value. It's a grave grave digger with uh, return a creature from your graveyard to your hand on it. Um, we could also just stay open and take a Lava Fume Invoker, who's fine. Seagate Oracle's good, too. Um, I mean, the red red does have, um, as we already saw, some of the ramping Eldrazi, and it has some other effects that make spawn tokens. So I could take the Eldrazi Temple, sort of, and think about using it to cast Eldrazi, but I don't really think I want to. Um, I think I probably just, I'm going to take Cadaver Imp here. I think... The card advantage it can give you is pretty nice. Um, and Lava Fume Invoker is fine, but not super exciting. So we may go red, red, black. We may not. Uh, we'll just have to see what's open. Light Mind Field, another mediocre rare someone opened. But there's also a Blood Throne Vampire, um, which is definitely a good card, especially in red, black, where you have the steel effects. But there's also a good leveler here in Caravan Escort. Um, the levelers are basically, you know, the aggro strategies in this format. Also, a Spawning Breath, uh, which is, you know, can kill levelers before they level up and gives you a Eldrazi spawn. Um, but I think it's between Blood Throne Vampire and Caravan Escort for me. Um, the rest of the cards in this pack aren't especially exciting. Um, 
And since I've already invested in a Cadaver Imp who works well, incidentally, with Blood Throne Vampire, I think I'm going to take the Vampire um, and keep my eyes open for other uh, sacrifice uh, synergies and ways to steal my opponent's creatures and things like that. It's actually basically the same archetype that's in uh, Magic Origins right now. Okay, well, white actually may be more open, and this Knight of Cliffhaven kind of indicates that to me, um, that it's still around. The Leveler deck also really loves Champions, Drake, but you have to have, be really far into that uh, for it to be good. Gloom Hunter is also fine. Um, you know, a 3-mana 2-1 flyer is always fine. It's not amazing. It's always Battle Against Scorpion. But Knight of Cliffhaven still being here, it's interesting. But I guess there are two good enough, anyway, black cards and still in this pack that I don't really need to go into white. I mean, it is the only white card left, after all. Um... I think I'll take the Battle Against Scorpion. It can actually, you know, it gets rid of an Eldrazi, and there's lots of creatures with power one or less that it can actually kill. Uh, it's a fine card in this format. Um, it could kill our, both two of our creatures we have now and kill Levelers. Get Eldrazi spawn out of the way, like in a worst-case scenario. Um, all right, Blood Rite Invoker is pretty good for black. Um, so was Last Kiss, though, and I think that's actually what I'm going to take. It's a removal spell. We've also got Traitor's Instinct, now that I look at that, though. And we do have the Blood Throne Vampire synergy that one wants to have with that. Um, so it's kind of a hard decision. Last Kiss, Blood Rite Invoker, and Traitor's Instinct are all good for us. The fact that this Instinct's still here, I feel like means we'll see another one. Um, and I'd like to have at least probably one other Blood Throne Vampire to really get the advantage out of that. Um, I think I'm just going to take Last Kiss, the little, the good removal spell uh, that can gain us life and everything. It only hits play creatures, right? Yeah. It's basically Dows and Gloom if, for, from the more recent uh, formats. Um, what is that from? Fate Reforged? Something like that. Um, Shrivel's fine. Gloom Hunter is also fine. Uh, none of these blue cards are very good, although this can be good in the uh, Kiln Fiend deck. I had an opponent use it against me that way the other day. But, uh, I mean, these three blue cards being here isn't really a sign, but Gloom Hunter, I think, is fine, and I think him being here is a decent sign. Shrivel's also a good sideboard card, uh, but we'll take the Gloom Hunter. So, we did take two red cards first, but since then, we haven't seen a lot of red, so there's some chance we move out of it. We'll have to see where things go. Um, we did see red steal a creature card which is definitely good for our deck for this archetype um okay well kiln fiend made it back around which is definitely something worth thinking about we already do have a stagger shock which kiln fiend loves um and we have last kiss so here it's between null champion uh battle rattle shaman and Kiln Fiend, I think. I think Lava Fume Invoker is fine. We saw one earlier, but it's not exciting. Um, I think I'm going to take uh, the Battle Rattle Shaman. Um, Kiln Fiend, you really have to commit to and really make a deck around it for it to be good. All right, Raid Bombardment seems like it's good in our deck the way it stands right now. Um, Contaminated Bond can also be all right, but it's not amazing. I mean, it can... In this format where you play two colors almost always, it can screw people off of a color. But I think I'll just take a Raid Bombardment here. It may or may not end up fitting into our deck. And we're definitely happy to pick up a late Blood Ride Invoker. So it looks like we're kind of a red-black um, aggro deck. Uh, rather than, you know, a sweet ramp deck, which is something you do see people make in this format. Um, these cards are all awful. Uh, so I guess I'll take the one. I mean, this is the least awful. It's basically a uh, coercion from the days of magic gold. Um, and it's not a bad sideboard card against the opponent after I've seen that they have Eldrazi and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I'll take the spider. It's the best of the remaining cards. And I'll take a reality spasm. Gravity. Well, that's kind of a cool card. Not, there's not really a blue white skies archetype in this format. But it would be a good sideboard card if there was one. I've never noticed, seen it before. Um, yeah, the Battle Rattle Shaman's good with a couple flyers we have so far as well. Um, 
So right now, all of our creatures activate Raid, and bar raid uh, Bombardment, or what am I trying to say? Yeah, that's what it's called, Raid Bombardment. Um, I meant to take that out, not Stagger Shock. Yeah, they all activate it. So that's some synergy for you, although this doesn't actually, does it? No. But we have a lot of creatures who do already, so Raid Bombardment can be really good, especially if we get some ways to make Eldrazi. Uh, we still could, oh, well... <laughs> Guess I'm glad we're in red, because this guy's ridiculous. Um, I mean, he's he's good enough that he's in the um, the holiday cube, you know, so you know he's one of the best red creatures, red aggro creatures of all time. Um, but this is also something I would really like to end up with as well. Um, this guy's a mythic too, huh? I don't think I noticed that before. Um, yeah, he's just ridiculous. Easy to level up. You know, starts out as a 2-mana two 2-2, two -two, and if my opponent doesn't do something about him... He becomes, you know, a Sheevan Dragon on steroids, basically. Uh, the only other black card in the pack is this, so it's probably not going to get back to us. Um, yeah, I mean, that's we just definitely got to take this. Palaka Worm is also very good. Someone may end up with a couple of those. Another Donglayer Invoker, but he's definitely the best card in the pack, I think. Um, Vent Sentinel... It's fine, but not exciting. Brute Warden's cool, um, if you have the deck for it. Um, yeah, that's like the opposite of the charms, the mediocre charms that people have. So Vent Sentinel is worth thinking about. There are a number of um, uh, creatures with Defender, especially in black, that are good with it. But there's also another Last Kiss here, and a Blood Rite Invoker. I think I'm going to take the Last Kiss. Um, I may be prioritizing these... This sort of small creature removal more than I should, um, due to you know not really being used to a format quite like this one. But I think I take the last kiss over, you know, three skeletal worms also worth thinking about, but three creatures that aren't aren't super exciting. So, okay, Trader's Instinct. We said earlier that that's pretty good, but there's also a Zolaport Enforcer who I think is even better. Um, this card. What is this? Uh, yeah, it's not very exciting. I mean, it's a cool card. Um, but I think we probably just want the Zolaport Enforcer. He's another leveler who starts out as a one-mana 1-1 one, one, and then can get kind of out of hand. Um, you know, Trader's Instinct and Surreal Memoir even aren't bad, but I think I'd rather just have the Enforcer uh, keep our deck, you know, aggressive. We definitely need more 1 and 2 drops if we want to be really aggressive. So, uh, yeah. And we're definitely sort of in a leveler deck, although I don't think... I think black and red don't have a whole lot of them at common. I think blue and white is really where you want to be with the leveler deck. So there's It That Betrays, um, which isn't especially good here. Um, you know, even in this format, getting to 12 mana is kind of tricky. Um, I think now I do take a Traitor's Instincts. Um, you know, it goes all with our Blood Throne Vampire, and it can just sort of swing the damage race, and we're an aggressive deck, I'd say, so... Um, I think we definitely take that. Vent Sentinel is worth considering again, um, but I'm going to take the Trader's Instinct. Is this guy a zombie? No. Never know with black cards. Um, well, we have a Goblin Arsonist who's fine but not exciting, and we have a Shrivel who is mostly a sideboard card, I think, but a pretty good one. Um... I think I'm actually going to take the Shrivel. It's like a, it's like an amazing sideboard card against a ramp opponent where you can just kill all of their Eldrazi. And Goblin Arsonist is a fine one drop, um, and he works well as well with Blood Throne Vampire. But I bet we'll have a chance to pick up more of them. That's probably true of Shrivel too, though. I guess to be fair, yeah, I think it's kind of a toss up between them. Um, I think I actually I'm going to go for the Arsonist for now. Try to get our curve a little lower. Uh, we don't have the Eldrazi spawn to make that really work well. Um, we could take this, and it would be something that we only played in our deck, uh, Essence Feed that is, that we only play in our deck if uh, we really end up in um, like a ramp deck. But if we do, um, that would be a pretty good card. Uh, Blue seems pretty open. Hottest Spy Patrol and Frostman Invoker are both very good. Um, these white cards aren't really an indicator of anything, but I'd say blue is pretty open. Um, so maybe we can sort of speculate and take a blue card. Um, yeah, maybe I will do that. I mean, the Essence Feed's good, but we're just not at the deck for it yet. And this is definitely the best of the blue cards, I think. It gets kind of out of control. Um, if we end up 
other our other colors end up driving out, drying out. It's not too bad. Um, Escaped Null isn't bad at all. Uh, it's a real nuisance. It's more of a defensive card, I think, than anything else. Um, but it's better than Ogre Sentry. Um, Regress being here shows me further that blue is pretty open. Um, and the Null is fine. I think I'm going to take the Null, but... I think blue is open, and I guess that's something worth keeping in mind, but I'll take the null for now. Uh, we got another raid bombardment, which is still definitely good in our deck. It'll be better if we get Eldrazi things, uh, which I guess is something we just passed, um, but I'll take a second raid bombardment for now. Contaminated ground, I don't like a whole lot, uh, but raid bombardment can definitely be good. Um... This pack is, like, the best card in it is probably Praise Vengeance, and everything else in it is kind of shrug-worthy. Um, we have an Ogre Sentry who's actually in our colors, but, you know, not really what we're looking to do in our deck. Um, but I'll take him anyway. Um, if we end up with more Defender Synergies, I guess he could be good. But Alright, so the Skeletal Worm made it back to us, and I think I'll take him. He's something we could try to ramp into if in pack 3 we pick up some ways to make Eldrazi spawn, and he's very difficult to deal with, as you might imagine, if um, if he makes the deck. Okay. I guess I'll take a Contaminated Ground. If I play like a 3-color opponent with, cheap, with a uh, fragile mag mana base, then it could be good, but that's about it. Um, yeah, this thing is pretty good, actually, I would think, um, but it hasn't been taken up by anybody. Uh, I'm going to take it from somebody, um, it's just the best card of those that are left. Um, this is probably the best card of those that are left, and that's obviously the case for that one, too. So we definitely need some more one and two drops to really get going here. We also don't have, like... Like, getting a few Vendettas would be nice. We don't have amazing removal yet. We have good removal, but not amazing. Wow, Sphinx of Magosi is a huge bomb. I would have, if I could switch things around and pick that up in pack one instead, I would go back and do it. Um, and blue is really open. <laughs> it may just go all the way around since it's triple blue, and people may not want to have to deal with that. Um, but there is a Flame Slash here, which is crazy good removal. Um, Jiraga Tree Speaker is also really good. Traitor's Instinct, if this wheels to us, I'd be happy. I'd be happy if either of these wheeled. Um, I think they're both good for our deck. Uh, but we're going to take the Flame Slash here. Uh, it's just a good removal spell, and I was just saying we're in need of it. Wild Heart Invoker is also really good. So that's something to keep in mind if you're ever drafting this format. Um, yeah, so I think we go for Flame Slash. The black here is sort of underwhelming, but I wouldn't mind wheeling the Blood Ride Invoker, like I said. But we definitely want a Flame Slash. Yeah, that Sphinx of Magosi is crazy strong, so if we play against an opponent with blue in their deck, it's important to remember that they may have that. Ooh, another Brimstone Mage. I, there's also a Heat Ray, though, um, who I think is very good. Um, so there's another Blood Ride Invoker and another Cadaver Imp, but Brimstone Mage and Heat Ray are both better than both of those, and I think I want to take Heat Ray. It can take down... Any creature, basically. I mean, Brimstone Mage is incredibly powerful, but getting a Heat Ray is important for our deck to actually have an out against, you know, Eldrazi and things like that. I mean, it's not always going to have the mana to do it, but it's nice to have it. So I think I take the Heat Ray over the uh, that dude. Disaster Radius is a really cool card, but mostly for casual play. Um, we do have another Zolaport Enforcer, uh, which I think I'm going to take. Um, Essence Feed again, so if we really want to try to ramp, I guess I could take that, but there's some chance I just end up cutting the Skeletal Worm altogether. I think I'm just going to take the Zillaport Enforcer. Um, yeah, let's go for it. He's a good leveler. Not cheap to level up, but he gets to be a real problem once you start leveling him up. And another Zillaport Enforcer. Do we want three? I don't think so. I think here we take Corpse Hatch. Uh, it can, it's, another, it's a removal spell that can help us ramp, and that's pretty good in this format. Um, so I think I'll take a Corpse Hatch. Um, there's a Vendetta, too, so I'm getting all my wishes granted here. And a Forked Bolt, though. That is that is a hard decision. Forked Bolt's incredibly good, but I actually think Vendetta's better. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, people of YouTube. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm not super familiar with this format, but I feel like one mana instant speed, nuke a creature, you lose life equal to that creature's toughness, which is 
a, a setback, as is the fact that it's not, it says non-black, but forked bolt, you know, after a while becomes a pretty useless card, but you also don't really, can't really use Vendetta on, like, the scariest creatures of the game, but I think we definitely want Vendetta here. Um, we could have had four Zolaport Enforcers, it looks like, if we wanted them, but uh, I think I take Vendetta. I think we're set on removal now, and now what we'd really like to see are more creatures. Um, and there's a fine creature. We don't really want a third raid bombardment. I may not even run two, but here we'll take a Blood Rite Enforcer, Invoker, uh, who's perfectly fine. Um, yeah, that's who we'll take. Creatures are good. Yeah, I mean, running, we'll see how many. I'll have to look when we're looking at deck building. And we do have a lot of creatures who trigger Raid Bombardment, and that's certainly relevant. Um, but it's important to keep in mind that, you know, it doesn't affect the board immediately, usually. I mean, I guess you, it does affect your opponent's life total the turn you play it, usually, uh, but it's not always going to even do that. Um, Thought Gorger, which is a really cool card, but, you know, I'm not going to... I'm not going to take it um, <laughs> in this format, but it is, if you don't know it, it's, it makes you discard your hand when it comes into play, and it gets a plus one, plus one counter on it for each card you had, and then when it leaves play, you get to draw a card. Um, it's kind of cool, but this pack is kind of underwhelming otherwise, so I think I will just take the rare because there's nothing, I don't like stuff for the past or death cultist a whole lot, so thought gorger it is. There's another Essence Feed. Here's a Battle Rampart, which I think is pretty good. I think we do want to take that here. Um, it is a creature with Defender, but it gives can give our dudes haste. And that's pretty nice. Yeah, that Dragon Lord is at least a sweet rare. Last time I drafted this uh, yesterday, I didn't open any sweet rares, nor draft any of them. I saw all the weird Umber Mystics and stuff, so I was happy to pick up a sweet rare this time around. Um, another Traitor's Instinct, uh, but we ended up with only one Blood Throne Vampire, so I don't know how good it is, but it is a good and aggressive deck, and I think I'd like it more than a, a second Traitor's Instinct, more than I like a third Blood Ride Invoker, uh, so I think I will take it. We'll see if I actually end up playing it, but I will take it. I don't think our deck's going to be able to swing Skeletal Worm. We ended up with Corpse Hatch as our only way of making Eldrazi spawn. Um, so, not exactly exciting. A Cadaver Imp and another Blood Rite Invoker. Um, maybe I'm higher on him than most people, although Black just seems to be open, uh, as our deck indicates. Um, Cadaver Imp, the hand advantage it can grant, is pretty big, but we don't have that exciting of stuff to get back, so I think running... One Cadaver Imp is all we really want. I think I'll just take another Invoker. and I may not run three of them, but... There's an Essence Feed. Um, I'll take it. I doubt we play it. We could try making this into more of a rampy deck, I guess, where we try to play that Skeletal Worm, but... I think most of the time we're just going to want to be beating our opponents down. Um, I'll take an Eel Umbra. I think Escaped Null probably doesn't make our deck. Um, seems like more of a defensive card than anything. Um, yeah, I'll take a Death Cultist. I don't think we want to play him, though, even if we do need one drops, but we have better one drops. So, Fleeting Distraction. Oh boy. That's a good one. Is it a rebound or something? No. If it had rebound, I guess it might be okay because it draws you two cards, but it doesn't, so not that great. Okay, so I want to sort by color up here. I'm not like by default was set to something else. Um, all right, I think this is probably only a 17 land deck, which is kind of rare in this format, and it may not go well for me that I built a basically an aggressive deck for the most part. Um, now let's look at creatures we have that turn on raid bombardment uh, at least at some point in their existence. And that's these, him, when he's brand new at least, Blood Throne Vampire, um, not the Blood Ride Invokers, but the Gloom Hunter, the Cadaver Imp, the Brimstone Mage, although I'm probably not usually going to be swinging with that, the Battle Rattle Shaman to some degree, 
that would get scorpion and yeah that's quite a few but i think i still only run one and also the corpse hatch tokens i think i still only want one raid bombardment i think having too many cards that don't affect the board like when i play them is not what we, we're not where we want to be um we have a huge glut of three drops. Uh, let's put creatures separately. And we have pretty good removal. Um, Flame Slash, Vendetta, and Heat Ray, I think, are all premium removal in this format. Corpse Hatch, I don't think, is super far behind that. Um, and Last Kiss and Stagger Shock are good for slowing our opponent's early development or killing their guys so we can get through for more damage. I think we do still want to run two Traitorous Instincts, although maybe I'm wrong about that. Um, maybe a side one, like against an opponent with Eldrazi is probably where it's the most ridiculous, where you can just kill, steal their Eldrazi and just destroy them with their own dude. Um, and if you're lucky, you can then also sack it to your Blood Throne Vampire, but, um, yeah, I think that's probably where I make the cut. Um, so we'll combine the groups, sort, uh, by color, and... I think I like the looks of this deck. Um, got two double blacks and one double red, but it's a pretty important one. And he's pretty red mana intensive. Uh, you have to level him up with red mana. So that's important to keep in mind. Um, so I think... Hmm. No, I think 9-8 is right. I don't know if I do. I think it might be more of like an 8-9. Because um, our, like, our best removal for the most part, other than Vendetta, is in red. And we have a pretty red intensive bomb in our Cargan Dragon Lord. Um, Cadaver Imp, you can play whenever and it's good. And the same is true for Corpse Hatch. But playing Cargan Dragon Lord on... And being able to level them up immediately or playing them on turn two is where you want to be. The black cards isn't really the case. I think I switch it a little bit because of the way the, mostly because of our Dragon Lord. Um, all right, well, I think that's our deck. Thanks for watching my second Rise of Eldrazi draft ever. Let me know how you think I did in the comments, um, and we'll go off to round one and see how I did uh, from my opponents. So thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and